Jesus, our champion. Amen? How many of you know that Jesus is our champion? A champion is someone who fights for somebody else and is victorious. So Jesus is our champion. As I was studying for Palm Sunday, and I began to just really get, in, get into the scriptures about Palm Sunday, I realized how special Palm Sunday was. You know, and I'm going to read to you the scripture in just a moment, but it is, it, well, actually, I'm going to read it to you first. Let's read it right into it. In Mark 11, 2 through 10, it says this, Jesus told the disciples, I want you to go into the village opposite of you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt or the donkey tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing loosing that colt or that donkey? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded it. They said, the Lord has need of this donkey. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches or palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Palm Sunday is a very important day. It's not just something you pass over, you know, just like, oh, and then just keep going. That Jesus fulfilled the prophecy that Zechariah said that one day the king would come and he would come riding in on a donkey. And he is the savior of our lives, the savior of the world, the redeemer, the way maker, the son of God. So it's powerful. You know, before Palm Sunday, there was the Last Supper. Before Palm Sunday, you know, the woman with the alabaster, she broke it on his feet and anointed him for what he was to do. And then Palm Sunday was the day where Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of the Old Testament that he was the Son of God. So before he rode into Jerusalem, he did mighty miracles, but he never quite revealed himself in that manner. Even people were healed, and he would say, you know, you're healed. Go show yourself to the priest, and you're going to be free now, but just don't tell them who healed you. So many times that happened before this day. But when he got on that donkey, and when he rode into Jerusalem, he was declaring. It was a declaration. And that's why the Bible calls it the triumphant entry where he rode into the city of Jerusalem, and by him riding on it, he declared to everybody, I am who Zechariah prophesied. I am the son of God. I am the king that you've been long awaiting for. And that's why the people cried out, Hosanna! Do you know that Hosanna has a couple meanings? The first meaning of Hosanna declares, save us. Please, we plead with you, save us. And there's another, another meaning of Hosanna which declares, thank you, thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you that you've saved me. So as they declared, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Can you imagine? They began to shout it before him and they began to shout it behind him and he began to walk in. And they laid the leaves down and they laid their clothes down. And I think that's so awesome because I feel like it represents us even laying down our hearts and us laying down our lives and us recognize that, that we need a savior, that we recognize that we need redemption. We recognize that we need forgiveness. We're not just trying to do life on our own, but we welcome in Jesus. So Palm Sunday 
is a powerful day where Jesus declared that he is and was the son of God. Wow. That's why we can't miss a service. And that's why all of these services to come Friday, Good Friday, when Jesus was crucified, that's why we need to try to, that's why we need to be here in service. Because God is going to take us even on a journey of seeing the revelation of who Jesus really is and what he has done for us. And may we never get religious. Oh, I just come because I come. No, never get like that. Let there always be a fresh revelation. Oh, wow. As I begin to study on Palm Sunday, I thought, oh, wow, Palm Sunday. Hmm, let me study on that. When I began to study it, I began to cry. Because I began to really see Jesus and what he did for us. And he didn't have to get on that donkey, but he did. And he didn't turn back and he didn't turn away. Because I needed him and he knew that I did. You needed him and he knew that you did. So number one, behind the palm trees, Jesus could see the cross. So as those palm trees were being laid and as Hosanna was being declared and as he rode on that donkey, he could see the palm trees. But behind the palm trees, Jesus could also see the cross because the cross was coming. But I'm so grateful that Jesus didn't get off that donkey. I'm so grateful that he didn't run off to another town in another village who maybe embraced him more. But he rode into a city that wasn't even necessarily for him. But he knew it was the city of David. And he knew I need to come in. And I know the cross is before me. But I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to run away from the purpose that my heavenly father has sent me to do. These people, these precious people need me too much to get off of this donkey. I need to stay. So behind the palm trees, Jesus could see the cross. A scripture in Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus, what was it? It was for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy that was set before Christ? It was you. It was me that we could be reconciled back to the Father once again. That we were hopeless in our sin. We, were, we have been hopeless in, in all of that. But Jesus said, I'm going to go because I have a joy that's set before me. And that joy is that all of the sons and daughters of God can come back to him and no longer be separated because of this thing called sin. That's why if you find yourself here today and you stumbled on in here or you're visiting or you're watching somebody get baptized, celebrating with them, but open up your heart because there may be a bigger reason why you're here today. God wants to get a hold of your heart and God wants to get a hold of your life. And this, he's the savior of your heart. He's the savior of your life, but you have to let him in. He already died for you. He already, he already paid the price for you. So look at this. Jesus didn't walk away. He didn't walk away. He didn't turn away. He thought of you and he thought of me as he stepped closer to the cross. Man, I don't know about you, but it makes me very grateful for what Jesus has done for us. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This scripture right here, when Jesus got on the donkey, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, that, that is this scripture being fulfilled. That's how you can see, how did God love me? Well, he sent his only son to die on the cross for you, to die on the cross for me, to bear our shame, to bear our sickness, to bear the poverty, to bear it all, so we can be reconciled with God again. Oh, so it's a powerful day. Look at Psalms 118, 25 through 26. It says, save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes 
in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. And that is another example of declaring Hosanna. Save now, Lord. Send now prosperity, Lord. Redeem and thank you for the salvation. Thank you for your saving power. You know, I can remember the day when I sat in a room when I wasn't, I wasn't serving God. I wasn't going to church. I had grown up in church, but then I had walked away from the Lord as a teenager. And I was 17 years old. And my grandmother had just gone on to be with the Lord. And I remember sitting there in the room late at night. I was actually sleeping on the floor in one of my friend's house. And I had thought to myself, is this it? Is this all there is to life? I recognized and I realized that was there was an empty place and a void inside of my heart that nothing and no one could fill. And I tried filling it with this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. And I came to the point when I was 17 years old where I realized there's a hole in my heart and God, I cry out to you, but I don't even know how to get back to you. And it wasn't just a few weeks later that one of my friends invited me to a youth ministry. And then I went to the youth ministry and the pastor gave the opportunity to give my life to the Lord. And I gave my life to the Lord. And that's when Jesus made me new. He forgave me and he became my Lord and he became my savior. There's no one like him. The only way to the father is through the son. And today we acknowledge Jesus as king as Savior, as Messiah, as the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't turn back. Thank you, Jesus, that you got on that donkey and you fulfilled that prophecy of old. Do you know that God prophesied that through Zechariah over 500 years before Jesus' birth? And that's why you can trust the Lord, because the Lord knows the beginning to the end. And the Lord will hold your life in the palm of his hands if you would just give him your life, if you would just give him your heart today. And, and you might be thinking, oh, is this just for people that don't know the Lord? No, this is for everyone. Because you could be serving God for 10 or 20 years, but do you still have, do, are you still giving him your heart? Are you still giving him your life on a daily basis? Surrendering to him. So number two, let's continue with our message. Praisers began to turn into doubters. And we got to be careful and not let the doubt in. Don't let the doubts in. Doubting always comes from the enemy. And the enemy is full of lies. He's the father of lies. And everything he says or suggests is a lie. There's no truth in anything that the enemy tells you. All he does is steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. How did the same people that were crying out Hosanna, the same people that put down the leaves, the same people that laid down their own clothes for the donkey to ride over, how did they turn into crucify him? They were once praisers, but then they turned into doubters, and some literally turned into haters to the point that they were willing to crucify an innocent man. Jesus, that week, and that's why we honor him this week and every, really every day of our lives, but he was betrayed on Thursday by Judas. The people who praised him just four days before began to yell, crucify him, and he was crucified on Friday. So think about that. Jesus knew what was coming. He knew what was before him, but he didn't turn back. But these people that once cried Hosanna began to declare, crucify him later. So how does a praiser turn into a doubter and then into a hater? It's because you allow the lies of the enemy to come in. You can't entertain the lies of the enemy. You have to refuse them. You've got to resist them. I've got to obey God, and I need to resist the enemy, and he'll flee from me. Last Sunday was heart for the house. You all gave sacrificially. We gave sacrificially. But the enemy tries to come immediately to steal your faith and to steal the word of God out of your heart and lie to you and say, oh, you wrote those things on that card, but you don't see any of it happen yet. 
You have to resist those things. You have to say, get away from me. All you are is full of doubt and unbelief. I don't want anything. I don't want any part of you. I trust God because my God is faithful. My God is good. My God is true. My God is he's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He's the ruler of my heart. He's the ruler of my life. And he's the savior of the world. But we're not going to start off as praisers and turn into doubters. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. See, thanks be to God, because he always, 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 always leads us into triumph in Christ. Always, always. Harvest will always come to those who sow into the kingdom of God. Harvest will always come. Healing always will come. Breakthrough comes. Always. Because we're in Christ, we can have faith and trust that we will walk in that victory in the Lord. That's why the enemy will try to put pressure on you, like you still feel that symptom in your body, or things don't look that changed, or that loved one still not saved. You have to say, no, 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 my Lord always brings me into triumph in victory. And that's why on Palm Sunday, it was called the triumphant entry of the king. Jesus rode in there. He was the peacemaker. The donkey represented peace. The horse represents war. But he said, I'm coming in because I'm bringing peace. And he was the lamb to the slaughter for the sacrifice of our sins. We should have been the one on the cross because of our shortcomings. But Jesus took our place. And he became the savior of our hearts and our lives for all of eternity. In Ephesians 6, 13, it says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So I encourage every single one of you in this place who gave, stand and stand therefore and do not let go of what you're believing God for and it shall come to pass in due time and in due season but we don't sow a seed and then dig it up and examine it because we didn't see the harvest just yet we need to let it stay in the ground we need to water it we need to speak over it we need to believe god but we can't uproot it because of what things may look like in the natural what things look like in the natural are always subject to change that's why you have to have an anchor in your soul and an anchor in your life which is the word of god and the love of god because if you believe god loves you then you are okay If you believe in the word of God, then you are anchored in the word. So when the storms of life come, you're not going to be moved. Why? Because you're anchored in the word of the Lord. You're anchored in the love of the father that he has for you. So in Galatians 6, 7, and 9, it says, do not be deceived. How many of you know that that's what the enemy tries to do? He tries to deceive you. That what you have sown for, it didn't really do anything or it didn't really matter. He tried, he's the deceiver. He's, he carries deception. But we are not deceived. God is not mocked. God will never be laughed at. God is not mocked. No, we will never laugh at the Lord. As if he is not powerful enough to take care of us, to take care of our family, to save our loved ones, to bring breakthrough, to heal our bodies. God will not be mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For whatever a man sows, that is what he will also reap. And verse 9, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. Come on, somebody say amen to that. All of you who have been helping for the Easter services, putting together baskets, sowing your seed, 
keep coming to church, going to school at night. Don't ever grow weary while doing good. For in due season, somebody say due season, we will reap if we do not lose heart. Come on, we will reap if we do not lose heart. And that is the same thing Jesus did. He didn't grow weary in well-doing. He reaped a harvest of all of us because he did not lose heart. He even endured the pain of the cross for him to have a harvest of our hearts and our lives. And it blesses him so much when we're able to come to him and spend time with the Father and knowing that heaven will be our home for all of eternity. This life here on earth is but a vapor, but eternity is forever. Okay? So what have you sown for? What are, what did you, what are you sowing for? Make sure you hold on to the promises of God. Don't start off as a praiser and turn into a doubter. Don't cry out Hosanna and then say crucify him. We have to stay steadfast with the word of the Lord, knowing that God is with us, knowing that God is for us. And if Jesus did all this already, he already endured all that already for us, for your children, for your grandchildren. If he did that, how much more will he do for you and your family? and for this city, and for this nation, and for this world. But I love the house of God because we're able to bring it up and bring it in front of people and say, don't forget what Jesus did for you. Don't forget what happened on Palm Sunday. Don't forget the sacrifice. Don't forget his courage. Don't forget what he carried. He said, he bore your sin and he bore your iniquity and he bore your sickness and he bore your disease so you don't have to bear it. Wow. That means I don't have to live with this condemnation anymore. Wow. If I, if I just trust in Jesus, if I give him my heart, I don't have to live with this sin in my life ruling me, reigning me, driving me. Wow, I can receive mercy instead. I can receive grace instead. Wow, I don't have to be sick anymore because Jesus carried it for me on the cross. And when he was wounded and by his stripes, I'm healed. That's why I thank God for the house of God that brings a remembrance of what Jesus has done into this world. Number three, and I'm closing with this. We could all stand to our feet today. Get ready. Somebody say, get ready. Tell your other neighbor, get ready. Come on, tell your other neighbor, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Arise, arise and shine. Awaken, don't go to sleep. Get ready, get your stuff ready. Get yourself ready. Be alert, be sober, be vigilant. Get ready, get ready. Cause Sunday's coming. Get ready. The soldiers didn't know about Sunday. The soldier who speared him didn't know about Sunday. The soldier who whipped him 39 lashes didn't know about Sunday. The devil couldn't even figure out Sunday. But get ready because Sunday is coming. Jesus rode in and declared he was the king. Jesus died for our sins on the cross. He went to hell and he died in the grave. And then on Sunday, he rose again to victory. Today is Palm Sunday, but we need to get ready for Sunday. And in John 11, 25 through 27, Jesus says to her, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, 
who is to come into the world. Jesus is the Son of God. And on Palm Sunday, he rode in a humble way on a donkey, fulfilling a prophecy of 500 years old for you and for me. And he didn't turn back away, but he kept going for the joy that was set before him, the joy of you believing and knowing the Lord and being in heaven with him for all of eternity. This life is but a vapor, but heaven is forever. And he knew of that terrible place called hell where there's flames and worms that do not die. And he said, I don't want to hear the cries of more people falling into that terrible place. So I will send my son to die on the cross for them all. But who are you bringing this Sunday, this Friday, this Saturday? With every eye closed, every with hands lifted before the Lord. Just a sign of surrenderance to him. As we worship Him, I want you to think about, God, who do I need to invite? Who do I need to call? Who do I need to text? Who do I need to compel to come on Sunday so they could see you, so that their eyes would be revealed and know that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus declared Himself as King. Come on. Let's just begin to worship God. And even now, He's putting faces. He's putting names on your heart. And He wants to use you to bring people to Christ.
Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.